Hello, and welcome to the Charlie Forum. My name is Chris, and today I wanted to talk about the best methods I've found to level up in Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. Since the new expansion, Dawn Trail, is coming in the summer, now's an awesome time to catch up, level alternate jobs, or tackle the process for the very first time. Before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share if you feel like I've earned it. Also, if you're watching this video, I just got married. My now wife and I tied the knot on Saturday, and this video is scheduled to help me with a stopgap before my next story recap, which I'll get to work on as soon as we get back from the wedding, so please look forward to it. With that said, let's jump right in. Before anything else, I want to share some things that can help you no matter what stage of this process that you're in. These four tips and tricks will help you level up whether this is your first job to max or the last one you need to finish out your board. Food buffs in 14 increase all XP gained from any source by 3%. This bonus is on pretty much every single food item in the game, so don't feel like you need to be buying some crazy expensive food if you're only like level 20 something. Simply go to a shop in town, grab some super basic food that works for your job, and make sure that you always keep that buff on. Like most MMOs, logging out in a sanctuary, which is indicated by the little half moon next to your XP bar, will ensure that you have rested XP in your character. This bonus is a passive 50% bonus that's stored up over time while you're in a sanctuary zone. You can see the stored rested XP as a slightly dimmer section of the XP bar next to the main bar, but keep in mind that this XP only applies as a bonus to some sources and not all sources. 14 has a collection of items that can be earned through special events, pre-order bonuses, and some other methods that will boost your XP gains. Some of these items have some stipulations, so make sure that you read them very carefully to ensure that you're actually getting the benefit from wearing them. One of the easiest ones to get can be attained in the Hall of the Novice, a seven part duty that will teach you the basics of combat. The Hall of the Novice is available starting at level 15 from an NPC called the Smith, and he gives you a set of gear and a ring that will boost your XP by 30% up to level 30. Joining a free company in 14 can help with a multitude of tasks, including finding people to help you complete content, create social spaces, allowing you to explore social housing if your free company has one, and additionally, it will provide you with some passive buffs. Free companies can have two buffs active at a time, and they will affect all members of the free company, with some of the more useful ones being boosted XP gained, increasing the duration of food buffs, reducing teleport fees, or even reducing how much durability your gear loses if you die during your adventures. Alright, with those basic tips out of the way, let's discuss how to best level up if it's your first time playing Final Fantasy XIV, meaning that you do not have a max level job yet, and you're working your way through the main story of the game. Some servers in XIV have a lower population than others. To help these servers stay populated, the developers will place a passive buff on all new characters created on these servers. This bonus will give them 100% bonus XP all the way up to level 80, or for 90 days, whichever happens first. If you're flying into Eorzea solo, or you're jumping in with some friends who have also never played, I would suggest maybe getting all of them to start on the same server and also start on one that has this bonus. The best part is, is that if you really don't like the server, or if you really want something more populated in the future, you can always transfer your character out into a more populated server once you've used the bonus to your advantage. This is really the, the main meat and potatoes here. The MSQ of 14 is designed to be tackled and muscled through in order to push you into the other content that will help you level up. Main story quests will not only progress you towards the endgame, but will also move you down the path towards unlocking new dungeons, new areas, and features, and they all give huge chunks of XP and, of course, gear. All MSQ quests are marked with the Meteor style outline around their quest givers and turn ins, and they can also be tracked in your UI. All of the starting classes in 14 have a Guild Master that will give you quests at various level thresholds that often unlock special skills, items, and give very large XP rewards. At level 30, they'll also start you down the track to evolve your class into its corresponding job which will grant you even more new abilities. While each individual mark may be small, the overall package of the hunting log will quickly fill up XP bars at lower levels, and you should always take out targets you see marked with the little symbol above their head that indicate they are a part of your hunting page. Your grand company hunting log is also another great source of XP once that's unlocked, and it also grants seals which you'll need for valuable materials and promotions. And really, these are the four best ways to level a character for the first time. Following the MSQ is just too much XP to ignore, and it's required anyway to make progress towards the newest content and get caught up before Dawn Trail comes out so that you're ready to jump in on day one. 
Now there may come a few moments where you hit a bit of a wall in the MSQ and you have to hit a level or two before you can accept the next quest because of a minimum requirement. In general, running a roulette or just queuing into your highest level dungeon, anything like that would be your best available option here. You can also target one of the methods in the next section until you get to your next level and then continue the MSQ. All right, so that covers the first timers, but now let's talk about the old timers. If this is your second, third, fifth, or however many there are now, 19th, I think, job, you've probably maxed out at least one and you're working on an alternate job at this point. You've finished the MSQ, you've got everything unlocked, and now you're ready to just push some levels without the aid of the story. Thankfully, there's a lot of really good ways to get this done. I'm going to break it down by level range here because that's sort of what works best as far as organization is concerned. From level 1 to 15, you're going to want to complete your rank 1 hunting log since the only jobs that are going to start in this range are going to be your base classes. After that, you're going to grind fates with your chocobo companion around for help. It's better to do lower level fates that you can grind out really quick than to try and hammer away at a really high level one that takes you an hour to finish. So just try to stick close to whatever your current level is as you move through this range. Starting at level 15, we hit what I like to call the long stretch, where all the best methods to level up are both very tiresome and extremely repetitive, but they are also undeniably effective. Mix all this other content in here as well. Do things like roulettes and dungeons and beast tribe quests to keep yourself sane, because otherwise you're gonna actually lose your mind doing the same things over and over. But we can break this down into a couple sections as well. From 15 to 61, we're gonna focus on grinding Palace of the Dead. You'll need to be level 17 to unlock it for the first time, but once you do, you can enter Palace of the Dead at level one on another class. You could potentially do this all the way from level one, but it has a slightly worse return based on the time it takes before level 15, as the XP reward is percentage based. The best way to grind this content is to take it from floor one all the way to floor 60. Once you've cleared 60, which acts as a checkpoint, reset your progress. This will give you the option to start your runs from floor 51, which has the best return on XP for difficulty of any 10 floor segment in the palace. Simply run 51 to 60, defeat the boss, exit, reset, and restart from 51, rinse and repeat. Once we hit 61, we'll be in Heaven on High, which is basically just Palace of the Dead 2. We'll do a very similar method here, clearing up to floor 30, repeating 21 to 30 to grind out the 10 levels we need to reach 71. Once we hit 71, we're going to be grinding the two Bajja zones, either the Southern Front or Zadnor. Both of these zones have a large number of fates that take place within them, and all of the fates give really great XP, as well as some items and glamour that could be useful down the line for you. Don't forget to equip your Bajjan earring if you have it, as that will increase your XP gains and also give you haste, which is really nice. There may come times where there's not a ton of people doing this content right now, especially since we're in the lull before the expansion. But if I was a guessing man, I'd say that a couple weeks or maybe a month before, this will become very populated with people who are coming back to prep for the expansion and leveling jobs up that they want to use. This will also probably be one of the better methods to level Viper and the unannounced caster when they get introduced to the game if you want to tackle the Dawn Trail content using those two jobs. Once we hit 80, we're going to have a bit of a slowdown. From here, we're in current content from Endwalker, so we're going to have to act accordingly. As a result, running your roulettes every day, farming your highest level available dungeons, doing fates in Endwalker zones, and of course the Arcasadara Beast Tribe quests will help you along really nicely. However, going back to Bajja is probably still the best XP you're going to get in terms of time investment. Also be sure to claim your daily and weekly bounties from the hunt board to maximize your gains, and be sure to complete your wondrous tales from Chloe and Idleshire and also complete things in your challenge log to quickly inject some XP. Remember that mixing up your methods here is key, as you're going to get completely burnt out if all you do is Bajja 24-7, so please don't grind one thing mindlessly unless you're really committed to just getting to the finish line as quickly as possible. And really, that's the easiest path to maxing out each job. It can take a really, really long time to get them all done, but once you do, you'll have only 10 levels to get through in Dawn Trail to explore each job, as opposed to potentially 100. So it's a great time right now to hammer away at this accomplishment and level any of the jobs you'd like to explore, now or in the future, 
while we wait for the launch of Dawn Trail to be bestowed upon us. With that, we'll wrap up our guide for the best practices in leveling in Final Fantasy XIV right now. Come the next expansion, I'm sure that some amount of this information will change, but the lower level stuff will probably remain true as it has for the past couple launches, so this video hopefully doesn't need to be updated right away. At any rate, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, let me know your thoughts or questions below, and share this with your fellow adventurers if it's your first time entering Eorzea, or you just really want to get Black Mage done before Dawn Trail. See you in the next video. Bye.